Hello and welcome. While well, Portsmouth Museum is temporarily closed, the team is working behind the scenes to provide continued access to the collections and heritage of the city. My name is Susan Ward and I'm Curator of Art at Portsmouth Museum. For the last six months I've been working on an exhibition titled Portsmouth Revisited 2, a visual history of the city from 1900 to the present day. It will feature modern and contemporary paintings, photographs, prints and sculpture from the museum collection. With featured artists such as Edward King, Carl Rudziak, Jackie West, Pete Codling and John Green. In the last 120 years, Portsmouth has come through quite a lot and survived two world wars and undoubtedly seen significant changes to the city. Key historic landmarks such as St Thomas Cathedral, the Guild Hall and South Sea Castle have weathered the test of time. And in more recent years, additions such as Fratton Park, the Zurich Building, the Tricorn Centre and the iconic Spinnaker Tower have all shaped the city we know today. Portsmouth Revisited 2 is an exhibition that captures a sense of change, resounding spirit and steadfastness. Whilst not attempting to be a definitive history, it is rather a snapshot of the city and its people through the eyes of artists. I'm now going to talk through a few pieces that will feature in the exhibition. Portsmouth Museum has over 80 works of art by the artist Edward King. Uh, and he became very well known in Portsmouth for his series of blitz bombings paintings. And in Portsmouth Revisited 2, I, I was going to include three or four iconic and most popular works from that series. One is the Guild Hall, uh, we think painted in 1941. Uh, it has certainly become one of our most iconic works of art. While it shows the Guild Hall, in the aftermath of blitz bombings looking fairly unscathed, in actual fact what we're looking at is an empty shell with the interior having been destroyed by incendiary fires. And we can tell it's an empty shell from the painting by the slivers of blue and the ochre in the windows, which have been carefully um, used by the artist um, to, to sort of draw your eye in to the daylight inside a, a very, what is now, a, well, at the time, a very empty space. I think what is interesting about the painting overall, uh, given that it's wartime, it, it doesn't feel melancholy or pr giving across a sense of despair, but rather, I think, um, one of it, it, it's it's more uplifting and it looks like a bright, sunny day. So perhaps there's, there's the suggestion from the artist that although the city suffered damage, it was still standing strong. The next artist I was going to talk to you about today was Carl Rudziak. He is a local artist who is fascinated by people and their stories. And his life-size portraits of local people are captivating. The portrait of Moses, as shown here, is a perfect example. He is the oldest fisherman in Portsmouth and the last of his kind. His boat is moored at the camber, not far from Carl's studio, and he is a well-known local public figure. Moses agreed to let Carl do his portrait and they went out together in the Solent on the fisherman's boat. Carl thought this was the perfect opportunity to get to know more about the person he had heard so much about and was to build up ideas for the painting. He soon realised, however, that whilst on board, he was expected to do his fair share and consequently had been enlisted to help in pulling in the cuttlefish pots. I first came across this painting um, when I visited Carl in his studio a few months ago. I wanted to, uh, a painting to be included in the show that really captured a sense of um, local community and people in Portsmouth. And when I came across this portrait, I just said, this is the one. This is It, it captures a unique personality, a sense of place. And I think also pays tribute to a once thriving fishing heritage that has almost been, almost disappeared. Um, it's it's a fabulous portrait, and I don't think it's been um, 
displayed locally before. So um, I'm very much looking forward to um, having it as part of the exhibition. One of the um, really interesting parts of being a curator, we get donations all the time coming in from people's personal collections and you often don't know what you're going to get. Um, and sometimes genuinely very, very nice surprises turn up. Last year, um, with this, a drawing was donated to the museum collection um, and it's an architect's watercolour and pencil drawing from, I think, 1983. Um, by Barry Russell and he was or had been previous professor of architecture at Portsmouth Polytechnic. The, the drawing is called Four Monuments and it's a view of the main walk through Victoria Park. If you know Victoria Park well um, this will be familiar as all four um, monuments are, are very much still there today. So uh, the, the towering monument in the foreground is made of pink granite. This one's dedicated to the officers of HMS Powerful, who died in 1899 to 1900 in South Africa. The slightly smaller grey needle-shaped column is dedicated to those who lost their lives on board HMS Victoria in 1893 and was erected by the survivors in 1903. The picturesque miniature Chinese temple at the at the back um, is made of solid stone with a replica Daegu bell and four brown marble columns on white marble base. Um, this is a memorial to the sailors of the HMS Orlando back in 1900. And in the background um, is the very imposing curved back black monolith which was once the headquarters of the Zurich Insurance Building um, and now student accommodation. I, I think um, it's a fa fabulous drawing in that it captures um, a very, very traditional sense of a monument. It captures um, a contemporary um, building that is very much a monument in its sheer sc scale and size. And um, sort of, I just like the fact that you've got all three, four together. Um, it um, it just creates a lovely um, time sequence. In the first version of Portsmouth Revisited, artists were very much influenced and fascinated by the maritime and naval shipping, the coastal landscape, and capturing um landmarks um some of which are still still standing strong today um we go forward and past but post 1900 artists uh seem to have a different um agenda and were influenced much more by capturing um a sense of place through the local people this is um, perfectly realised in the Fratton Park series of paintings by Jackie West. For over 21,000 people living in or around Portsmouth, there is just nothing better than being part of that local football community. Jackie West spent several seasons at Fratton Park and was fascinated by the people, the, the community spirit and the spectatorship. Her paintings created in response to her experience are vast, vibrant and represent everyone from all ages and backgrounds. They trigger memories, nostalgia and engaging stories that are a key part of the city. We received um, a donation from Jackie of nine paintings last month um, and some of these paintings had previously been on display at the museum um, but we're very fortunate to have them donated into the collection now for um, for future generations to enjoy. As curator of art, I'm really looking forward to um, putting on the exhibition together and I'd like to thank Carl Rudziak and Jackie West um, for their generosity and willingness to be part of the exhibition and letting us use their images for this virtual tour. Portsmouth Revisited 
will hopefully open in the early summer and we will keep you updated with the progress of this. For now though, um, I would just like to say many thanks for all, all our visitors, for your continued support and good health to everybody. Many thanks.